a reading from the Acts of the Apostle. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Peter's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith of his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leader did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he has announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you time for refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophet from of old. For Moses said, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin, to him you shall listen to, for you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and thus afterwards also announced these days, you are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, in your offsprings, all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. For, you, for your first, God raised up from his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Hallelujah, our Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is that, what is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the world. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the path of the sea. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. How wonderful your name in all the earth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Since we've got one author for both the third gospel and the Acts of the Apostles, it's not an accident that so much hangs together so nicely for our scripture today. But what we do see is a series of points that are worthy of being observed. First of all, the way in which the scriptures are used from Moses forward to demonstrate the reality of the resurrection from a prophetic point of view. Then, the strong statement that is made both in our excerpt from Acts today and in the gospel in a different way, you are witnesses of these things. Or in the preaching from Acts, we are witnesses of these things. What a powerful statement that is as well. Notice the statement here that we have in the Acts of the Apostles that we know, brothers and sisters, you acted in ignorance as did your leaders. But now, let's get it together. Now let's get it together. We can do this. We can give you forgiveness. We can give you that period of refreshment that you're longing for while we wait for Jesus. And here's the interesting point. He's designated as the Messiah, but he hadn't brought the Messianic kingdom yet. Okay? The resurrection validates him as the designated Messiah, but he hasn't come yet to bring in the Messianic kingdom. That's what we would know. Joan and Janet, among others, as the second coming. So we give thanks to God for that. The thing, though, that distresses me, and this is all through all the Gospels, but it's especially strong in Mark and here in Luke, it was necessary that the Christ should suffer. It was necessary. Why? What, what is there about you and me as individuals that this was what our redemption had to involve, the crucifixion. Why? What is there about us that made that kind of redemption necessary? That's a scary kind of a thought, but I think it's one that is worth pondering. Are we that valuable that God wants to experience the utter depths of suffering for our sake? Is it the only way to show how loved we are? Is it that we're that bad, that that's what it took? We can look at all those possibilities, and today it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for us to do that. But it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and so enter into his glory. We can say, why? And we can also say, thank you. Let us stand and pray.